The prominence of gay church musicians has been something that many say has perverted and disgraced the church. But gay people are a lot more accepted in our society now, so you see a lot more of them playing instruments and singing and leading music departments in churches. But should gay musicians be allowed to hold music positions in churches like that? In this video, I'm going to tell you why they absolutely so gay musicians have been something that the church has dealt with for many, many decades. And it's always been something that's frowned upon by church people because to them, it's hypocritical. It's like, how can you, you know, be living in sin and, you know, be in a prominent position like that in the music department in a church. But it's strange because everyone says it's bad and we shouldn't allow it. But when that music department is slamming and that gay dude is killing it, Everybody's happy and all smiles and no one seems to care about it. It's like I say all the time, winning cures everything. It's like a sports team and when that sports team is losing, it's everybody's fault. It's the defense, it's the quarterback is, you know, sorry. The coach needs to be fired and all of that. But when that team is winning, nobody has any problems at all and all of those little issues are just swept under the rug. And it's really the same with gay church musicians. As long as dude is killing it, everybody's happy. But the problem with that is that if you're going to say that it's wrong, then it should be wrong all the time across the board, not selectively wrong when you feel like it or when it's not going well. And people will point to scriptures and all of that to talk about how wrong it is, but at the same time ignore scriptures that go against their own behavior. And they'll talk about the difference between sinning and living in sin to make one of these things be worse than the other and support their own behavior. Now, I'll get to whether or not we should allow gay people to hold these music positions and stuff in church definitively in a second. But first, let me tell you about all of these other sins that church people allow so you'll understand my answer when I give it. And we can start right at the top because some of the things that churches have allowed a lot of these pastors and church leaders to get away with is just absolutely astounding. Many of them are womanizers, they're chauvinistic, they treat others bad, and some of them even steal money from the church. And the worst of them have been accused of things like sexual assault and sexual misconduct. And while all of this is happening, not only do these same church people know about it and allow it, but they actually protect these people. You should have heard the amount of people that were violently angry and enraged when Bishop Eddie Long's case came out that he was accused of sexual misconduct with little boys and when Pastor John Gray cheated on his wife for the third time. The responses were like, y'all are just being too judgmental and you know, they're just people. And my absolute favorite, touch not thou anointed. Right now, as I'm making this video, there's a situation going around with Bishop T.D. Jakes being at Diddy's house and being involved in some gay activity, by the way. And, you know, thus that whole power bottom thing that's been going around online. And while none of us can say whether or not the rumors about that are true, the amount of people that are coming to his defense and protecting him and being angry and lashing out at others for saying something about it is just crazy. And there's currently another situation going on with Bishop William Murphy, where he played the hip hop track, Walk It Out in the middle of a church service and had the entire congregation swag surfing and all of that. And because people are speaking out, you know, expressing concern about it and saying it's wrong, People are literally taking up for him and just saying, oh, it ain't that bad, you know, it, it ain't that serious. And another example is one that I always give, which is the dude that's on the late night infomercials right now selling miracle water, Peter Popoff. This dude has been caught, not accused, but caught in multiple schemes to scheme money from people and all of that. But the point about this is, is that he's on TV right now selling miracle water when this scheme is public and people know about it. Yet, he's been allowed to do it. Now, I'm gonna share with you a personal story that relates to this whole thing that I've never talked about publicly before. And I wanna be a little careful talking about this because I know some of the people involved in this story watch my videos. And it's a story that reveals some of my shortcomings that I had in the past. But right before we get into that, 
If you're getting value out of this video, or if you've gotten value out of any of my videos on this channel, I need you to do me a quick favor. I am on a mission to grow this channel to 100,000 subscribers this year and make this channel the most valuable resource for musicians just like you. So it would help if you would go ahead and subscribe to the channel now, and I would really appreciate it. So I was playing at this church some years ago, and I was doing a little dirt with a couple chicks there at the same time, like I was talking to them at the same time. And both of these girls were really liked by the pastor, and one of them was in the choir, but the other one just went to the church. He wasn't in the choir or anything. And things got a little nasty because they found out about each other. Now, it wasn't a situation like reality TV show fighting or anything like that, but it did get a little intense. And while all the crap was hitting the fan, both chicks went to the pastor and told him about it. And actually one of the girl's moms worked at the church and she told her mom what was going on and her mom went to the pastor on her behalf. So there were some individual meetings that happened to try to solve and salvage the whole thing. And it basically became a thing of each girl saying that the other one came in and tried to ruin her relationship or, and stole her man and all of that, more or less. Now, mind you, there were a lot of other girls at the church at the same time trying to show interest and get at me as well. And not because like I was all of that or something, it was just because I was in a church full of primarily women that was like one of the only dudes there that wasn't gay and wasn't married. And I mentioned that part of it because while this whole situation was going on, some of these other girls that were interested in me were going to the pastor asking about me and showing interest in all of that, which just made the whole situation even more convoluted. Now, here's the kicker. And I'm gonna show you exactly how this story relates to this gay musician thing we're talking about. The pastor at different times had prophesied to both of these girls that I was going to be their husband. One of them, he said it directly and clearly to mentioning my name and everything. And the other one was more like a really, really strong hint that it was going to be me that was going to be her husband. So now imagine while all of this heat is going on and the crap is hitting the fan, they both are going to him and saying, hey, you know, I'm holding you accountable. You said, that this is gonna be my husband, so you need to shut this other chick down. Now, out of all of the people that I named in this situation, guess who came out on top? It wasn't girl one, it wasn't girl two or her mother, it wasn't the pastor, it wasn't any of the other girls that were interested in me. It was me, the person in this situation who was clearly wrong and had been the cause of all of this mess in the first place. The pastor allowed this situation and protected me in it because I was the director of music at the church and it was basically this thing of, oh yes, he has as the director of music glorious purpose and he's going to change this church or whatever. And these women are just coming in to be distractions to him. So in protecting me, he allowed like all of these rumors and such to go around about these other girls, causing them more mental anguish than I'm even qualified to say on their behalf. And I've since apologized to them and all of that. But this story really shows how church people selectively choose who is going to be right and who's going to be wrong and what they're going to allow based on their own preferences. Now, the point of me sharing all of this with you and how it relates to the subject of whether or not gay people should be allowed to lead music departments and play instruments in churches and all of that is this. If it's the case that we're going to allow bishops of some of the largest congregations in the world be at hip hop parties at Diddy's house and be accused of gay activity and have other bishops playing hip hop music in church, having the whole congregation swag surfing to it and allow them to still be leaders. As long as we're gonna take up for and protect pastors and leaders of these churches that get accused of things like sexually assaulting boys, which by the way, is not only assault, it's gay activity. And as long as we're going to allow and protect preachers who are womanizers and treat others bad and, you know, get caught cheating on their wives two to three times, still be church leaders, we should absolutely unequivocally allow gay people to be church musicians. At the very least, church people will be less hypocritical about what they allow. Now I mentioned earlier about dating church girls and choir members and all of that. 
which as you can see can be something that's really dangerous if not done right but you want to go check out this video right here where i dive into that subject so you don't fall into those traps